Okay, now we're going to be looking at the muscles of the uh, head, neck, and trunk, and we'll try and get the upper extremity in here as well. So let's look at some of the muscles of the uh, skull and cranium first. If we look here, right near the frontal bone, there's the frontalis. That's going to raise the eyebrow. That's the frontalis muscle. Around the eye is the orbicularis oris. That's going to allow your eyes to squint. Then around the mouth, we have a similar muscle to it called the orbicularis oris. That's the kissing muscle. That's going to allow you to pucker up and purse the, uh, the lips. If we look here, this is the platysma muscle. This muscle has the ability to pull on other muscles and to draw the angle of the mouth downward. That's your platysma. Then we have this muscle here that follows the mandible. It's close to the angle of the mandible called the masseter. Now there are four muscles of mastication, T-I-M-E, -E, we call them tie muscles. The T is for temporalis. That's the temporalis muscle near the temporal bone. The M in time is for the masseter. And those muscles will help chew. That will close the mandible or elevate the mandible when you chew. There are two other muscles, the internal and external pterygoids that we can't see. But we know that the jaw just doesn't elevate and depress. It just doesn't go up and down. But it deviates side to side. And it's that lateral deviation of the mandible that's controlled by those two pterygoids, the internal pterygoid, also known as the medial pterygoid, and the lateral pterygoid, known as the external pterygoid. Here's the zygomatic muscle, or the zygomatica. Since, let's stay in the front here a little bit. And here is the sternocleidomastoid. This muscle is named by its origin and insertion, sterno. Clido, sternum, clavicle, and the insertions on the mastoid process. This happens to be the left SCM, and when the origin and insertion come closer together, it will take the head and rotate it in the opposite direction so these two points are in better alignment. So the left SCM rotates the head to the right. If I rotate this a little bit this way, we can then see the occipitalis muscle. And just below it is the upper fibers of the trapezius. And we can see a little bit of the middle fibers of the trapezius. The upper fibers will elevate the scapula. The middle fibers will retract the scapula. And here we don't see the lower fibers, but the lower fibers would move the scapula down, called depression. And this is a pretty long muscle. It actually goes from the EOP, the external occipital protuberance, and goes all the way down all the cervical vertebrae, all the thoracic vertebrae, all the way down to T12. So that's a pretty superficial and large muscle. Another superficial muscle here that we see of the shoulder is the deltoid. We have a posterior deltoid, a middle deltoid, and an anterior deltoid. The anterior deltoid will flex the shoulder, posterior deltoid will extend the shoulder, middle deltoid will abduct the shoulder. And in the insertion of the deltoid, if we look at the origin, look at that, it's a little bit of the clavicle, the acromion process, and the spine of the scapula, and the insertions on the deltoid tubercle. Going back to the front side, we then have a large muscle of the front called the pec major, which is the upper ribs, and the insertion can't quite see it, but it inserts on the intertubercular groove, also known as the bicipital groove. And the pec major, since it's a large muscle of the front, can flex the shoulder. It can also horizontally adduct the shoulder. And it can internally rotate the shoulder. And it can adduct. So the pecs can adduct flex, horizontally adduct, and internally rotate. It does quite a few things. If we took pec major and peeled it away, we would then get to the pec minor mu muscle. 
It attaches to the upper ribs. The origin is the upper three to four ribs. And the insertion's on the coracoid process. That too helps elevate the ribs during respiration. Let's stick to the front where we can see the rectus abdominis, the linea aspera, the external obliques, the internal obliques, what we did is we took this off, so here we can see fibers running in two different directions. Here's the internal oblique, and running perpendicular to it is the external obliques. If we rotate this a little bit more, we can see the transverse abdominis, runs transversely to the rectus abdominis, and we're going to rotate this a little bit more so we can see the ribs and look between the ribs. We have an external intercostal muscle, external which is superficial, and an internal intercostal muscle. Those two work with elevation and depression of the ribs during inspiration and expiration. Okay, let's, let me rotate this a little bit to the back one more time. We can see the serratus anterior. Serratus means sawtooth. And if you look at these, this portion of the serratus anterior, it looks like serrated teeth. This is the serratus anterior. This muscle is the upper eight to nine ribs, travels underneath the scapula, and attaches to the vertebral border of the scapula, but on the anterior side. That is a primary protractor of the scapula and upward rotator. And then we have the latissimus dorsi, which originates on the thoracolumbar aponeurosis, travels up, and attaches to the bicipital groove. So those are some of the main muscles here. I'm going to take out the upper extremity here to show the rotator cuff muscles. Now what we did here is we took off the superficial muscle of the shoulder called the deltoid, that's a large muscle that gives the shoulder its rounded contour. There was an anterior, a middle, and posterior fibers. When I take that off, it gives us a very nice uh, view of the rotator cuff muscles. You need to first identify the spine of the scapula. Once you identify the spine of the scapula, the muscle above it, near the supraspinous fossa, is the supraspinatus. Below the spine of the scapula, where the infraspinous fossa is, is the, sup is the infraspinatus muscle. So here, 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 and here is all infraspinatus. Below that is the teres minor. So the rotator cuff muscles, we call them the sits, S-I-T, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. And on the front, on the anterior side, is the subscapularis. So the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and teres minor insert on the greater tubercle, while the subscapularis inserts on the lesser tubercle. Their actions, supraspinatus abducts, infraspinatus, and teres minor externally rotate, and the subscapularis internally rotates. So abduction, external rotation, external rotation, internal rotation. Notice that here's the long head of the triceps and it pierces between teres minor and teres major. Teres minor is a rotator cuff muscle, not teres major. Okay, so that will bring the upper extremity to a close.